So after studying uh, the concept of refraction of light and uh, the principle of reversibility of light, we will look at what happens to a ray of light when it falls on one of the surfaces of a glass slab. Let us say we have a glass slab P, Q, R, S and its thickness is say T and a ray of light is incident on one of the surfaces. So this ray will pass through the glass slab and come out of this glass slab over here. Let us see what happens to the uh, this ray, the incident ray over here. The ray which passes through this glass slab, we will call it the refracted ray and the one which comes out is the emergent ray. And let us see what is the relationship between these rays and the angles that come that we come across when the refraction happens. So this is the incident ray. Let us say this is point A. It is incident at point A. The ray is passing from the rarer medium to denser medium. This is air and we have air over here. This is glass. So this ray will bend towards the normal. This is the direction in which the ray would have gone if the glass slab was not in the way. So this is the projected incident ray. And we will need this in the later part of this video. So I am trying it right now. This is the projected incident ray. This ray would get, get refracted and would go something, something like this, bending towards the normal. So it will go like this. So this is the refracted ray. And then again we can show a normal over here. This is the normal. And then this is traveling from glass to air, that means traveling from denser to rarer medium, therefore it will bend away from the normal. So this the ray would have gone like this in this particular direction, but it will bend away from the normal. And what is observed is this ray emerges out of the glass slab such that it is parallel to the projected incident ray. So I will show that it is parallel to the projected incident ray. So it will come out something like this. So, the first observation we make is that the emergent ray is parallel to the incident ray. How and why we will look at very shortly. Let us identify the angles over here. This is the angle of incidence I. This would be the angle of refraction R over here. Now, this is the angle of incidence for the second phase. This is the first interface. This is the second interface. Over here, this is the angle of incidence. As you can see, this angle of incidence will also come out to be value R. Because this and these two normals are parallel to each other and this is like a transversal and this angle and this angle is like alternating angles. So alternate angles. Therefore, this is R and this is also R. So the angle of incidence at the second interface is R. And this angle is the angle of emergency which is actually the angle of refraction at the second interface. So let us call this point as, as point B, let us call this point N. So first of all, let us try to understand what is the relationship between angle I and E. And we will try to understand why these two rays don't come out to be parallel. So if I look at the first interface over here, the refractive index of the second medium that is glass with respect to air will be sine of angle of incidence which is I and sine of angle of refraction R. This we will call equation 1. Similarly, at the second interface, the refractive index of the second medium, in this case air to glass is equal to angle of incidence is R, angle of refraction is E. Using principle of reversibility, I can write this as refractive index of glass with respect to the inverse of this principle would be sine E upon sine R. And now, if you compare equation 1 and 2, the left hand sides are equal. So the right hand side have to be equal. So sin i upon sin r is equal to sin e upon sin r. So I will write down over here sin i upon sin r is equal to sin e upon sin r. Sin r, sin r gets cancelled. Sin i is equal to sin e. Therefore i is equal to e. And it is because of this that the incident ray and the emergent ray are parallel to each other because this angle I and this angle E are equal to each other. So, having now understood as to why the emergent ray is parallel to the incident ray, let us look at what happens to the two rays. As you can see over here, the ray I, the incident ray would have gone along this path, but it has got displaced in this direction. It has got displaced in this direction by a distance x or this, the displacement is x. This displacement is known, is known as lateral displacement. It is getting laterally displaced through distance x. I can show this over here also. 
this is also x. And now uh, we will look at how to how do we get an equation for finding out this particular value of x and on what factor does the lateral displacement depend? So we'll look at a couple of angles over here. So let us call this and this point as say C. We will first begin by by looking at this angle, this particular angle. So if I show it, if I call this angle as angle C A C A B, angle C A B is equal to angle C A N minus angle B A N. As you can see in the diagram, C A N minus angle B A N is equal to what is angle C A N? C A N is this angle, and it is vertically opposite angle of angle I. This angle and this angle are vertically opposite angle of each other. As you can see, they are vertically opposite angle. Therefore, this is angle I. Angle B A N, as you can very clearly see, is angle R. So angle C A B is an I minus R. Now, what are the things that we are aware of or what are known to us already? We, are, we know T, the thickness of the glass, we would know angle of incidence and we would know mu. These are the things, things that we would be aware of. So we need to find out X in terms of T, I and mu. So let's proceed further. So angle CAB is I minus R. Therefore, take sine of I minus R is equal to, this is opposite side that is BC upon the hypotenuse. This is 90 degree, the hypotenuse is AB. Therefore, BC, therefore, this I can write as BC is X upon AB. Therefore, X is equal to AB into sine I minus R. Let us call this equation 3 x is equal to ab sine i minus now what is ab ab is this line let us take us let us take r let us look at this particular triangle let us look at triangle a n b and this triangle a and b cos r is equal to adjacent side this is 90 degree this is angle r so adjacent side would be a n upon hypotenuse would be ab therefore ab is equal to a n upon cos r and what is a n a n is the thickness of the glass so i can write this as a b is equal to t upon cos r now i'll put this value of a b as t upon cos r into this equation and therefore i'll get x is equal to t upon cos r into sine of i minus r let me write it over here x is equal to t into sine of i minus r upon cos r. So this is the equation that we need to focus on. This gives me the value of this displacement as to how much does the incident ray get displaced. And it gives me in terms of thickness, in terms of the angle of incidence i and in terms of angle of refraction r. <coughs> now t is known, i is known. R I would know because I would know the refractive index because if I look at refractive index G A as we have written over here is equal to sine I upon sine R therefore sine R is equal to sine I upon refractive index. So this equation will help me get the value of R so I can find out R over here as far as cos R is concerned cos R is equal to 1 minus sine square r. So if I know sine r, I can find out cos r. So basically I need to remember or understand this equation as to x is equal to t sine i minus r upon cos r and within that find out the value of r or sine r or cos r using these two equations. This and this. So if I know this and if I understand these two equations, I will be able to find out the relationship of lateral displacement. And finally as you can see over here in this equation, the lateral displacement depends upon the thickness of the glass slab, it depends upon I and it depends upon angle of refraction. Basically, this can also be written as it depends upon, instead of writing angle of refraction, it depends upon refractive index because angle of refraction would get decided by the refractive index. So, I can say T, I and mu. Lateral displacement depends upon these, these three terms and this is what is reflected in this particular equation. Thank you.